Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and in this video, I'm going to be joined by my friend Cole Brew, and I promised you a follow-up video on uh, on the version 8.0, the complete changing of the tier list algorithm and how we calculate it on the back end as we start this project and should have it finalized within the next week or so. So I'm just going to explain how we came to these numbers and how the tier list algorithm is going to work. So let's get into it. All righty. What's up, Cole? Bro? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I, I finished streaming a couple of hours ago trying to do the Hydra. Uh, well, trying to beat my previous record with the Hydra, di trying out different champions. So, yeah, it was a uh, fun, fun experience. Uh, it doesn't sound very fun to me. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, look, if you've got a Crazia, then you see the fun of, of doing oh, Hydra. Oh, jeez. Yeah, hits, that's... Yeah, oh. yeah, she hits for half a million per hit. So, she, it's like... <laughs> It's fun. <laughs> okay, you're right. Yeah, that would be fun if I had a Krizia. Yeah, yeah, it might be fun. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, well, yeah. Also, we've got uh, 2x voids going on this weekend, so I wanted to quickly touch on that really quick. You know, I don't even want to pull during 2x voids. I want to wait until yeah. there's like a guaranteed void champ for 80 shards or something, or 120 shards or something. 90. Like, or yeah. Do you think I should be pulling during 2x voids? Um, it depends where you are in the game and what your goals are. So, like, I, I pulled some shards that I had, and then I thought, why did I do this? Because, like, the, the few champions that I'm missing from Voids are... I, maybe I should be better just wait it out for a 10x. They'll never put those champions in a guaranteed one, so... It really depends on what, what you're hoping for. But I know that you're missing lots of Voids, so... These are the best times for you to pull. That's why I'm so torn, because I am missing Siffy and Hegemon and Yumiko and all of these top tier... Um, of the top 10 Void Legendaries, I probably only have four of them. So, right. it's... Yeah, it's probably decent for me to still pull during 2x. I'm constantly mulling it in my head if it's uh if it's worth it or not. But yeah, anyway, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so you've got the, the tier list algorithm pulled up, correct? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Cool. So uh, for the viewers, what you're seeing over on the right side is going to be this new massive tier list project that a lot of us here uh, as content creators are partnering together to work on so that we're not just having one person's opinion so that it's a it's a project. It's a it's a big endeavor where we got like me and Cole Brew and Scratch and Smiley and Mad Capper and a few different people that are going to be giving their perspectives to try and formulate a tier list. So you're seeing on the left is the different uh, versions of the tier list that have existed over the years and how uh, the algorithm works works in terms of the weight and the strength of each area of the game. For example, being good in the dragon is not weighted as much as being good in the arena. So uh, what we did is we compacted some of the uh, some of the categories, removed the push the potion keeps and things like XP farmer and, and some of the things that are more known after this many years of raid being out. Or not necessarily more known, but less sought after in a tier list in an effort to try to keep it as compact as possible and give people the the information they're actually looking for when they're looking up a tier list. So did you have any thoughts on that process and how it went and anything that you uh, think we should still change or anything like that? Um, I think that we're at a good point. And of course, we'll be changing this this as we go not every week but it will be a project that will always get updated as long as we're part of this right so our idea was to to improve it in a way to include all players so that's why we added the the new scarcity and progression um categories in there we'll talk about those in a bit but i think we're at a good point right now where the well the updated version of the tier list will be reflecting our thoughts on how the game is at this point in time uh, for 2022 and, and and a good overall you know summary of all the champions that the game has yep uh yeah the most notable thing that we did was was like you said adding the scarcity and the progression grades because that ends up being 16 out of 100 on those two categories which is doesn't sound impactful but it is super impactful because the average weight distribution because there's so many different areas of the game in raid the average ends up being like four or five when you have this many areas so when something is worth 16 that we've added that is actually super impactful and the reason we added scarcity is 
so that people know uh, when they see, like, like who's a champion that'll have a max rating on scarcity? Probably, like, Seer. Seer, I would say Acrisia. Like, um, she is very, very unique in what she does and not really outshined by any other champion at the moment in the game. Um, other champions would be Necrit, very, very unique. Hegemon, very, very unique in what they do. It, it's like a one... One in how many champions we have in the game? Seven hundred. It's like seven hundred and thirty-five or something. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's they're literally one in seven hundred in what they do. Yep. So, yep. Exactly. Uh, even like Tormin will probably have a decent score on scarcity. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It, it, they open up different avenues for you to build teams and in any part of the game because of how unique they are. Yep, exactly. And so we wanted to be able to articulate that as a grade on the tier list so that people can see that, you know, so the, the goal when you're making a tier list is not to help out the people in Platinum Arena. Like, they know what they're doing, they've been playing a while, they are extremely dedicated players, and they have all nuanced strategies available to them. When we're making a tier list, our goal is to help early and mid-game players understand maybe what the perspective of champions is in the community. So when they pull a seer and they go to the tier list and they see, oh geez, seer has a maxed out scarcity rating. Okay, I probably want to hold on to her. So that that's the goal with a tier list and why we added that category and why we also wanted to add the progression side of things. That was kind of uh, a lot of Scratch's idea, who unfortunately is busy right now. But did you want to dive into the, uh, the progression side of things? and what that's going to mean between progression and endgame? Well, um, progression is pretty clear in, in what it says. is It's taking you from point... Let's say endgame is, is the final destination. It's going to take you from point A, which is the start, to the endgame. Right? It, it's not going to help you during the endgame, but uh, it will be the, the stepping, stepping stones or like the stepping champions <laughs> to help you push through... Um, some of these champions are outshined later on, but they are crucial uh, at, at the beginning of an account and, and what they provide. Yeah, it would probably be something like Apothecary, Bellower, champions right. like that, that are just godly uh, during the progression phase and then start to fall off yeah, a little bit endgame. Even something like an Aeothar, as an example, he's a great poisoner, but he gets outshined later on by, by other champions. But uh, he, he proved his role in, in, let's say, the Dragon, which is a progression dungeon. Um, he proves himself in the clan boss as well with, with very minimal investment because of the amount of poison that he applies. It's, it's those points which count as progression. Of course, we've got, I guess, we've got the, the clan boss in different categories and all that. So that would also count. But um, some of these champions are, yeah, more for progression rather than keeping them all the way to the end. Yep, exactly. And that's another thing we had to, you know, adjust. We had to adjust uh, for Demon Lord Hydra now. Instead of just Clan Boss, we had to add Iron Twins. Um, and then we also added uh, Scarcity and Progression, which is why we had to crunch down some of those other categories that are going to be a little bit outdated. Like the Potion Keeps, it kind of is what it is. And now there's so many campaign farmers that having a, a, an own section for XP Farmer is probably not super needed. Um, I think that mostly covers the big stuff. It's going to be quite the endeavor because yeah. you know like you said 700 something champions and we got to go through and completely redo them all so <laughs> the only the only thing i i i, I kind of disagree with is arena and the reason for that is i think arena at, at this point has no value to end game players in the sense uh, other than you know getting the maybe the rewards the the swift parry sets are not so much used anymore uh, the other, the deflection sets, again, not so much used. They, they, the players out there who do Plat Arena are only doing it for the bragging rights and to get those avatars, really. That is what they, why they're doing it, in, in my, my opinion. Um, I think Arena still needs to be modified, and hopefully that will come in future patches. But like, if I would change right now the versions, the, this version of the tier list, I, I would maybe drop Arena down, maybe one point. And then put something else up like the Hydra to not to a nine, to have those as equal. Maybe I would do that, but I don't we're, know. If we're a democracy agree. here, Maybe Cold Brew. We can we can do that. Yeah, you, yeah. Uh... <laughs> I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying that I think at Arena, like for for me and you, we don't we don't compete in Plat Arena. We might do it once every you know how many months, right? 
I don't I don't do it. it it just takes time away from my day I don't have the I don't think I have the champions and the gear to even compete to get into the top 100 or something and like for me arena it's it's basically useless now because I only do it for the crafting material nothing else yeah that, you know that's the thing um you know there's gonna be a, a lot of people out there that haven't hit that point yet but he's right when you hit yeah. that point where you've maxed out your great hall at, at that point, um, you're basically just trying to maintain a decent rank in Tag Team Arena to get CVC points. <laughs> like, that's really the only... Yeah, that's... <laughs> Tag Team and Classic Arena basically keep your keep your rank, um, and that's it. And I mean, Tag Arena now gives more than, than Classic Arena to me, at least because of the, the accessories, which are always useful. And you know, eventually maybe the shards when I'm... You know, maybe looking for one sacred, extra sacred to summon or something. Uh, so tag right now gives way more than the normal arena, which I've capped out. And I have thirty five thousand medals sitting there. Yeah, you need to be able to like prestige your great hall or something. Uh, are you familiar with the prestiging yeah. mechanic? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What I would like is, let's say, if it had a thing where you would prestige, let's say, accuracy, and now for ten thousand points you can get. 1% chance to never be resisted. And that would go against that 3% chance we always have. And eventually you could cap it out and never get resisted. That would open up avenues. Yeah. Yeah. That's and a good have, idea. you know, an yeah. insane cost, insane cost, not a thousand medals, maybe, you know, I don't know, 5,000 or something. How many, how many, how many great all medals do you have right now? Uh, about 35,000 last time I. Checked, I think. Oh wow, I have thirty six thousand. I'm just always one step ahead of Colbert. I can't help it. It's just you know I'm always one step ahead, just barely. You know that I I I stay at ten out of ten, right? <laughs> I don't do my fights. I only do them when I'm trying to push or something. Yeah, I know that's funny. So uh, yeah, no, I I like that idea. That is a that is a cool idea. And yeah, I I do agree because I think it takes about. A year and a half or so if you're a really dedicated player to max out your great it, it really depends yeah it really it depends, depends on the state of the arena like for the time we had the bots it was very easy to push and farm so now, it really depends Clarium said there was never any bots you got to get it right Cold sure Blue. sure <laughs> but <laughs> but in general yeah it takes i would say a year and a half of active play and 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 being on point with your refreshes and and using even the refreshes we get after a patch, which is like a two-day duration. You have two days to, to use it up. So you use it when the time is right and all that. Yep, yep. Nope, I agree with all that. Um, anything else we need to touch on? We put Iron Twins at seven. So actually pretty impactful. We put it above Faction Wars, Spider, Fire Knight, nope. and that type of stuff. Yeah, no matter how, how much people hate the Iron Twins and how hard it is, it is one of the only ways we can get the soul stones even if we get them at a very bad exchange of let's say one soul stone for six runs <laughs> at the moment about right um it is you still kind of have to do it if you if you have a, an end game in goal or if you want to keep a, a good amount of those resources for the future and then maybe a patch comes in which makes things cheaper that's my hopes right now because the, the pricing is extremely expensive Yep, yep, I agree. Well, then make sure and let us know down below uh, where you agree, where you disagree, and any input you have. Uh, we, we always enjoy, uh, you know, taking absorbing as much information as possible yeah. and, and, and hearing as many different perspectives as possible. It's never going to be perfect. A tier list is always going to have flaws. It's more for just generalizing uh, information than trying to be, like, scientifically pinpoint perfect. So let us know what you think, and, and we're going to do our best and probably... Within the next week or two, we'll be able to unveil what, like, like the actual version of it. It, it is quite the project. We've got to go through 700 something champions and completely redo all of these cells and grade things with this new mindset in mind. So it is going to be uh, quite the undertaking, but we'll keep you in the loop. And is there anything you wanted to add uh, on the way out here, Cold Brew? Um, yeah, we're always open to discussion with this, and it, it's best when. You reach out to us, let's say when we're streaming, either of us, you know, just say, oh, I had a thought about your tier list. I would say this and this, and, or even send us a message over on Discord. It's it's easier for us to, to look at it at our own time. And and uh, yeah, this, this, this will be like ideally the best tier list. Like in our heads, this will be the best tier list. Yeah. 
And by the way, Scratch just now messaged me. So uh, this is just how it works when you're trying to do collabs. It's like, you know, this person's ready and this person can't be here. This person can't. And so, you know, right when we finish, here comes uh, Scratch. All the will work and he's ready to go. But anyway, uh, yeah. thanks, Cold Brew. And we will keep you in the loop and unveil this thing within yeah. the next week or two. So, all right. Thanks, man. Thanks.